No, I, I think very few people understand that he had an impact on geology as well as on biology. Um, most people hear of Darwin in the context of the theory of evolution. The theory of evolution has been studied and developed well beyond where Darwin took it. I mean, we've had more than 100 years uh, since the publication of The Origin of Species, and, uh, and, and scientists have not stood still in studying the processes of evolution since then. At the time, there was absolutely no idea about plate tectonics, um, not even the ideas that came up uh, 70 or so years later about matching the coastlines of Africa and South America, even that really had not uh, come about yet. And so the idea that the continents themselves had moved was, was, was way, way in the future still at Darwin's time. Now, of course, when we think about Earth changes, I think it's probably fair to say that most geologists would, would immediately start thinking about plate tectonics. To Gondwana is the supercontinent that was in existence for much of the last uh, 500 million years in, in some form or another that consisted of what is now South America, Africa, India, uh, Antarctica, and Australia. And then, as I said, bits and pieces of, uh, of what's now the Middle East, for example. Uh, Italy was part of Gondwana at the time. And it started breaking up. Uh, about uh, about, a, about 200 million years ago. Well, the continents are going to be in very different positions than they are today. Um, it's hard to study, it's hard to imagine 500 million years in the future. It gets pretty speculative, but 100 million years in the future, for example, uh, the East Indies uh, and Australia will be part of Asia. Uh, they're now separated, of course, by the Indian Ocean and the, and the various seas in, in the East Indies. Um, but all of that is converging. And actually, that's very interesting in and of itself because that's sort of the end of a very long history of bits and pieces of Gondwana rifting away from Gondwana and becoming part of Asia. And this, is just, this will just be sort of the last step. Um, the Atlantic will be a lot wider than it is today. Um, Perhaps the Bering Sea will be closed. A um, little hard to say what kinds of plate motion shifts there might occur. In 100 million years, you can actually get shifts in the direction of plate motions. But that's one idea about what the world's going to look like in 100 million years. I would have to say that perhaps the, the it would not surprise me for us to learn that or relearn, perhaps, that life on Earth is far more re robust than uh, a lot of people give it credit for, um, particularly some of the discussion that's occurring around global climate change and so on, is giving people, giving lay people the impression that life on Earth is, is, is very fragile and that we're sort of on the brink of going extinct. And in fact, the mass extinction that we're looking at today uh, is nothing compared to some of the ones that happened in the past. Correct. I, I, given, given that at the Permo-Triassic extinction, something like 93% of species, it's estimated that 93% of species went extinct, and yet life recovered and became even more diverse after that, gives me a lot of confidence that uh, that life is going to survive pretty well.